This is Katie Colleen here. Welcome back Colleen clan, or if you're new, then come join the family. Today I'll be showing you how to make this incredibly detailed pleather belt for your cosplay. The cosplay I'm working on in this video is for Orin from Final Fantasy X, and my dad is doing all the modeling, so I'll be using his measurements. So if you look at the reference, you can see two belts at the front of our main belt piece. And I would assume that the art had intended for the belt to open and close with these functional belt buckles in the front. A lot of cosplays that you can buy of Orin actually connect in the back. And I really wanted to stay true to how I interpreted the reference picture. So I wanted to make these front two belt buckles completely functional and I wanted it to belt together at the front. Now I chose to have six inches of overlap. So take the measurement around the waist and add six inches. And that's gonna be how long your belt piece is. I went with about 10 inches in the height of our belt piece, but it could really be anything. So the fabric I'm using is this vinyl. And the first thing I'm gonna do is actually add some detailing to our vinyl fabric. So if you look at the reference picture, there is a diamond pattern on the belt. So I'm basically just going to create a fabric with a diamond pattern on it. <laughs> so I'm taking a Taylor's chalk. So this is like a little white chalk pencil that will show up on fabrics, but it will just kind of wash away. So I'm using that to make a whole bunch of little diagonal lines. Each line is about a quarter of an inch apart. And then I'm going back and making lines in, in the opposite direction to make all of our little diamonds. So using a black thread and a straight stitch on my sewing machine, I am now following all of those little lines. This creates the diamond pattern out of our thread. You could definitely double up on this or use a different stitch, but I really liked the effect with just a normal straight stitch. So I only covered the front and the sides of the belt, which I felt would be the most visible. Okay, so now that we actually have a fabric that we're good to work with, I'm going to add our main belts that will buckle in the front and hold this whole thing together. Now I have a tutorial on how I make these belts out of packaging foam and pleather. So if you'd like to know how to make these little belts, please check out that tutorial. So once I have my two belts lined up, I'm going to top stitch them onto our vinyl. Now, as you are sewing these belts down, you are going through two layers of pleather, a layer of vinyl, and a packaging foam, which is pretty thick to put under a sewing machine. So make sure you change to a heftier needle. I'm using a denim needle. So this is used for denim fabrics, which are also pretty hefty. This needle is just a little bit stronger, so it is less likely that it will break. So now that it is functional, let's just cover this belt in details. And there are a lot of details on this belt. So I'm starting out with the white details. So I'm using this white pleather fabric. And when it comes to the pattern for this piece, it really is more of an art than a science. I just laid some paper down over the belt and sketched whatever I felt looked right. So how am I going to clean up our rough edges on this weirdly shaped pleather piece? Uh, that's a good question. So I decided it would look best if I made a bias tape and had the bias go around the entire outside edge of our white detail piece. Now cutting fabric at a 45 degree angle makes it much easier to go around those curves. And since our detail piece is really curvy, I definitely want to have some bias going around the edges. I'm going to take our bias piece and fold it in half and sew it shut. This gives us a clean folded edge that we can have instead of the raw edges. Then with that folded bias piece, I am attaching it along all the edges of our white detail piece and top stitching that down. And then I can just simply flip over our bias strip and top stitch that down. And now we have this beautiful clean edge on the end of all of our detailing. And that is our white detail that will go around the belt. And here is where I had a learning moment about making costumes for other people. So when you are making costumes for other people, and more specifically when that person is paying for the costume, they really kind of make the rules. So I had wanted to have this white piece go all the way around the sides and around the back. I felt that this was most accurate. 
My dad preferred to have this white piece just on the sides and to leave the back blank. He personally felt that no one would really be looking too much at the back and that it was okay if we skipped some of the accuracy on the back of the belt in order to save some time and money. So before we get into attaching this white detail to the sides of the belt, we need to add a lot of applique on top of it. And that is all these little blue pieces. Now the pleather I'm using is actually really cool. I think it's called like carbon fiber blue or something. Um, I got it off Etsy so I can link that in the description, but it has a really, really cool like metallic kind of reflective look to it. And I felt like this would be perfect for the belt details. I'm cutting out a whole lot of little ovals out of our pleather and those will get top stitched onto the belt piece with a straight stitch and then I'm going to go over every single one of these little ovals with an applique stitch. I have a few tutorials already on how I do the satin stitch for appliques or how I do the applique stitch as I've referred to it in some other videos. So I'm going to link those below if you wanna learn more about how to do this type of stitching. It's really the same process on the pleather, just that you don't need a stiffener because everything is already plenty stiff when you're working with pleather. And we can now sew this piece onto the belt. And it's really interesting how Orin's belt is designed. So you can kind of see how this white piece is intertwined with the main belts that connect everything together. And I'm just doing a straight stitch and just going over everything in my path. So I'm top stitching on top of our little belt and on top of the vinyl, just whatever I need to top stitch over, I am feeding it under the machine and I'm just going really slow and being careful because that is a lot of layers to go through. So there's two other tiny little white details that I wanna look at. So for these pieces, I'm just folding over the edges. The shapes were a little bit too complicated to do the bias tape method that I did before for our other detail piece. So I decided just folding over the raw edges would be good enough. And you can see how I still got the nice smooth edges. And this will be our little detail piece that we can top stitch on. This little white detail fits directly underneath one of our main belts. Our second detail piece kind of attaches to that top belt and holds it in place and then also extends across the length of the entire belt. So those will all be top stitched on. And then I'm gonna add some rivets. First, I need to make a hole through all of the layers of fabric. Then I need to insert our rivet post, snap on the rivet back. This rivet just sits inside this metal piece and then I put the metal post on the back and I smash it with a hammer. And that's how we are installing all our rivets. With all the details done, we can finally line this and get this finished up. I decided to line this with a pleather fabric. So I was looking for a fabric that could kind of hopefully grip onto the robe and any layers underneath the belt and maybe help hold it up a little bit. So I'm sewing around all of the edges of the belt. I'm leaving one edge open though to flip it inside out. And I will say that flipping so much leather inside out was a bit of a challenge. Uh, it honestly kind of felt like a workout just trying to get this flipped inside out. And then I'm going to go over all of our edges with a top stitch to keep everything flat. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comment section down below and I'll get back to you as soon as possible. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you all in the next video.